morning and welcome to Sunday the 3rd of October. It's uh, about half past 11 now and uh, I've already done a lot of the jobs that I normally do on a Sunday. I've still got to run the hoover around and put the dust around but I've washed um, Freedom's roof. I like to do that every couple of weeks. My dog's now expecting me to play ball because I'm videoing. Misty. Um, so I've washed the roof, I've washed the sides, I've run the engine. Yes, you're in. Get up here. Get up here if you want to get in on this video. Get up here. Never work with animals, they say. Don't they? Never work with animals. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, I know you want to get in. Yes, I know you want to get in. So, as I say, I've run the engine, which I do every Sunday. I fill my water tank. I've just turned the... Um, thermostat down on my immersion heater because now I've started to run the fire as I've um, it's entering into a colder spell. The back boiler is keeping the water in the tank hotter for longer and I noticed last night that when I ran the taps the water is far too hot so I've turned that thermostat down this morning. I'm going to pop out in a minute to the uh, marina office and I'm going to take you with me because I think I've got a, a heavyweight parcel to pick up. So I'm going to drive you around in the van. Uh, it's part of one of my future projects. And uh, I've had a parcel come, uh, when was it, yesterday, um, for by Mr Amazon, which I'm going to open in a little while and show you and tell you all about that. And uh, I'm just waiting for uh, a friend of mine on the marina to drop a, another parcel off, which is another project. And I'm going to do an opening and give you a brief idea what it's all about and then in a future vlog we'll do the actual installation so uh, I'll catch up with you in a bit but I'm going to take you with me down to the office and I've got to pop into Chandlery so I might do a little bit of video in there and uh, we'll see how the day unwinds and as you can see that's Misty's idea of Sundays lay back and have a tickle it's her dog's life We're going to have a steady drive around the marina and uh, I need to pick up some, um, put some laundry money on my card so I can get some laundry done. Nip into the chandlery because I need to get a little bungee for my cratch cover because one of them snapped. And uh, hopefully when I go in the office there'll be a parcel waiting for me. It's a bit too heavy for me to carry all the way back round, so hence this is why I'm driving round in the van. So uh, we'll just have a steady drive out the marina and then uh, see uh, what we can see. The sun's come out and it's it's warm in the van, but when you're outside it's not so warm. It's uh, quite breezy. And I noticed last night when I was out with Misty, more and more boaters have got the fires going at night. Freedom stove now will stay on, unless we suddenly have a heat wave. Um, she'll stay on now until um, sort of like April, March, April. 
when the weather starts to warm up then uh, I'll make the decision one day not to have it lit but for now she'll stay in 24-7 keeps the boat lovely and dry and it's always nice and warm and the one thing I do love about being on a boat is the fact that when I come in from work even with the stove just ticking over in the background my my home is a warm home and that's what makes it feel really special it's comfy I never get bored of this drive out of the marina now we are fortunate in so much as we've got decent roads around the marina um, I have been as, as you know if you've been watching the vlogs to look at one or two alternative marinas and uh, I've said this before, Mercia is without doubt the most expensive marina to moor at. But there's a reason for that. Well, there's several reasons to be fair. Um, but the main reason is the quality of the facilities and the actual um, setting in which the marina is in. It is well maintained. Um, there's a hell of a good ground crew that look after all the gardening and the, and the hardware which is the roads and the paths and the pontoons. There's a cleaning team second to none, them ladies are absolutely brilliant. Early hour in the morning you'll see them out and they clean everything. I've seen them washing not only the front of these signs, there's one here on the right hand side that's giving you the pontoon names, but I've seen them washing the backs of the same signs and you think, well that's dedication to, to your job. All these cars that are parked obviously belong to the people who are moored here, which gives you some idea of how many people actually live on their boats in the marina. And we're now coming down to the security gates and uh, all people with vehicles have a fob, which we have to use on the other side to open the gates. But on this side, we just have a little green button to press once you're on the secure side, and then it'll open the gates for us. The wind's definitely getting up a bit today. You wouldn't want to be, or I wouldn't want to be sailing Freedom today, because even though she's a big heavy boat, uh, 34, 35 ton, when she's sitting on the water in the middle of nowhere, this breeze would blow her around like a leaf on a puddle. It's amazing how quick and how easy the smallest of breezes can move a boat. And you need to keep that in mind because a lot of people do. They buy boats, they, they, they see the vlogs, and I'm not knocking those who do it, but a lot of people paint such a, a rosy picture uh, and make it all look so simple and easy. And it isn't, you know. Um, you get the benefit of being out in the countryside and traveling and meeting people but there's also some of the hardships for the people who constant cruise you know they don't have the benefit of being in a nice cozy well-maintained marina so uh, if you're going to be constant cruising go and walk down the canal paths on a really wet blustery day um, and remind yourself that that is your environment that you're going to be living amongst if you're out constant cruising I take my hat off to them guys because when they do this 24-7, 365 days a year, that's one heck of an achievement, you know, to put up with the uh, British weather throughout the week. You can see why I needed the van. And this is black dog, black bitumous paint. And this is uh, getting ready for when I do the blacking on Freedom. Um, I will tell you more about this in the future, but for the moment, you 
you want to research it. Black Dog is uh, a new name to me and it's one that I'm going to be trialling on Freedom. Now let's get to the Chandlery. A bit windy. Now, one of the two items that I collected today when I was in the Chandry was this little rubber bungee. The uh, original one was like these now here, like a cord. And I think the weather's just took the toll on it and rotted it. And I just wanted something to keep this part of the uh, the cracked cover back down where it belongs. And I think 
before too long for what they cost, only a pound or something each. I might just invest and replace them all with the proper ones. So that's the first item. Let me just show you the thing I've bought. So the other item I bought when I was in the Chandlery was this little black strap. And it's just there to keep the poles snug onto my new gang clank. Um, very impressed with how easy it is to fit and I might just get another one put on this end. Just keeps them nice if there's a bit of a windy day. It's not going to blow them off the actual gang clank. I know they're fastened with a chain and a padlock, but it's just uh, neat and tidy. So altogether, I think it's cost me about £2.70 for that and the bungee. So, uh, last of the big spenders today. Well, good morning. Welcome to Monday. 4th of October, we're starting to get into the autumnal months. The fire's ticking away in the background, so it's lovely and warm on board Freedom. And today, we have not one, but two parcels, which are needing to be opened. So this one is something I'm going to open a bit, which I'm going to show you now. The other one, I would explain what it is, but I'm not the one that's actually going to fit it. So. Oh, a package within a box. Now, those of you that own a boat, and then straight to them and I take the time to reveal what it is. Those of you who don't own a boat, this is just a quick explanation. And I'm not going to go into all the science. You can Google it. This is what's called a galvanic isolator. And these come into play when your boat, like Freedom, is moored in a marina and is plugged into the mains electrical supply at the end of my mooring. There's a, a situation you get with um, electrical leakage uh, in and around the water that's around your boat, which through to the science, which again Google it because I'm no expert, will rapidly accelerate the decomposition of the structure of the water line and below of your boat, the hull. It literally erodes. Now, to be fair, most boats have, or should all have, should I say, um, what we call sacrificial anodes. An anodes, sorry. Anodes. Anodes, uh, which are uh, like a magnesium metal, which is welded like a block on all four corners of your boat and as the name suggests sacrificial they're there to decay and um, decompose before the uh, damage is done to the hull now freedom has never had a galvanic isolator fitted and i don't know why because it was bought as a marine based marina based boat but what the um, original owners jeff has done Whereas most be uh, wide beams will have uh, a sacrificial anode, anode on each corner, basically, Jeff has actually had 10 fitted. So we've got three down the sides, each side, and two on the front corners and two on the back corners. So he has thought about it, but I'm not quite sure, and I will have to ask him next time I speak to him, why he never went for a, an isolator. And all this needs to do is where the electrical supply comes into your boat, you plug it into your landline and the other end plugs into your feed in to your boat. And this will then stop that being a problem. It isolates as its name says. Now, it's come from a company. I bought this off of Amazon and uh, it cost me the princely sum of £99. That's including delivery. So in a minute we're going to go on the stern deck 
can fit this. Um, and it says on it, suitable for supplies protected by RCD, earth leakage circuit breakers, maximum trip out, 30 amp. Um, and I can't understand why all boats aren't fitted with some form. There is a, um, what I call a black box version, which you can mount on your electrical cupboard wall and you take two of your earth leads, one in, one out, and it does exactly the same job as this. Um, but for me, I didn't fancy opening up electrical cables. I just think this is so much easier, neat and tidy, and it will do that job. And I do need to give that protection to the hull. Um, and we'll see how well these 10 anodes have worked when I pull her out this next year to have a blacked. Hopefully, they'll have done the job. And I will replace them if they need replacing. Um, depends how worn down they are. But this will then remain for protection whenever I'm plugged into a marina. When you're out cruising, if you're a constant cruiser, you wouldn't need an isolator because you're not going to come into contact with so much electrical, electrical, electrical leakage through the water and into your hull. Um, and that scientific mechanism of decaying of the hull isn't an issue. So soon and try and sound like I know what I'm talking about. Do look up galvanic isolator and the purpose of having one. And uh, when I go out on the back in a bit, I'll show me fitting this into place and you'll see how easy it is. So get yourself one. If you've got a boat, it's more than a marina and you haven't already got one. So that's the first item. It's all about prevention at the moment. Now this one is something I'm been quite excited to get and uh, hopefully this will be fitted in the next couple of weeks by somebody who actually knows what he's doing. There's certain jobs I just will not tackle and um, when it comes to the technical stuff like this I'd soon it be done by somebody who knows what they're doing. Now, another one that's well packaged, comes in two sections, which I was expecting. It's been well sealed up. Okay. This little device is called a fuel guard. And this is mounted in the engine bay and its sole purpose is to clean the diesel before it reaches the engine. Now there's two versions of this that they actually sell. This bit will be the same on both. This bit is the additional. Now what we have here is a bag full of pipe tails and valves. a 12 volt electric pump. So, we also have a water indicator and plenty of Jubilee clips. Now, again, so than me trying to explain it all in depth, what I would suggest you do, and I put this up to the camera look, if you Google the fuel guard, there's a video by the inventor of this, and it's been around quite a long year, for about 10, 15 years now. Watch the video. It is amazing um, just how effective this is. Now, if, you're, if you've been watching our previous vlogs, you'll know that one of my concerns is that the diesel that's in the tank, and there's about 180 litres of it, is quite old because it's never been burnt off because he's never used the engine. I now run the engine on Freedom every Sunday just to burn off some of this old fuel. My plan is the filter on this is removable, the green cone is removable and can be washed off. And what it does, it separates, as I say, out the water, which then can be drained off through that valve there on the bottom. 
and you can see, you'll be able to see when there's water in there. But having the um, water indicator connected to this, it will actually beep. So when your engine covers are down, you haven't got to go in there every day and have a look. This will beep and tell you there's so much water in there that needs draining off. Uh, which I think is a fantastic thing. So as I say, it comes in two kits. This is the, the main kit. So basically, you would fasten that to your bulkhead in the engine bay. Your diesel goes in, it goes through this filter, comes out this side, into your primary filter. From your primary filter, it goes to your main filter, fuel filter, which is on the side of the engine, back into the engine, which will burn as much of that fuel as it can when it doesn't, it will then send back through the return hose to the tank. So when you've got dirty diesel, you have a couple of options. We have several options. You can drain the tank, which is expensive, and have it cleaned. You can call out a company. I think there's one called Tank Buster. There must be others. Um, I've, I've seen they did, um, I think they did Narrowboat Chef's um, boat, and I think they quoted at the time that they paid about 600 and something uh, apologies if I've got it wrong but I'm sure it was over 600 pounds and they were very pleased with the results they actually showed you a sample of the diesel in their uh, tank before um, this company went and they have uh, a cart which is basically got a very big version of this on it and a very several big versions of this on it filters and what they do they run while they're there your fuel out of your tank through their filters and constantly changing the filters to get the crap out uh, normally done within the day so what i've bought is primarily um for when everything is sorted this will always act as a first line of defense of any diesel bug any um, sediment any water being filtered out he claimed the manufacturers claim something like i think it's 99.9 .9 water out and I think it's something like 95% of any particular. So then you've got your primary filter, which will then be the second line of defence. And then you've got your main fuel filter, which is your third line of defence. So the chances of any rubbish or water getting into that engine, having gone through the three, is very slim. So why have I got this? Why have I got an electric pump? Well. These valves that's in this bag, what we're going to do, when this is mounted, the diesel is going to come in and a pipe will take it to the primary filter. But we're going to put a T-junction in the pipe between here and the first filter in my system. And what we're able to do is turn, if the engine isn't being run, we can turn the pipe uh, the valve sorry to switch the fuel off so it'll come from the tank through this filter it'll go to that valve which has been turned off so it can't now go to the engine it will then be diverted via this pump so it'll be literally sucked out of the filter through this pump and sent straight back to the tank none of it will go to the engine now that is called fuel polishing so my intention is when I first get this fitted, I'm going to take a measured amount of the original diesel into a clean jar. And for seven days, I'm going to leave this pump running. And every day at the same time, I'm going to take a measure of the fuel in another jar and another jar. And so another... we'll have seven jars. And I'm hoping that we can see a physical difference in the quality of the diesel and the cleanliness of the diesel between the first jar and the seventh jar. Now, once that's done, and I'm happy that it's polished, it's going to take a while because it's a smaller pump than when the big firms come out and do it. So it's 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 a constant thing. It's going to take a lot longer. My intention is this will be mounted with a switch, and whilst my boat is in the marina, um, the chances are I will leave that valve closed. And the switch then on a Sunday morning, when I get up to wash the boat and clean the boat, I will just flick it on and leave it to run for several hours. And it will just circulate the fuel through this one filter, 
not into the secondary filter, but straight back to the tank. So what it's doing, it's scrubbing, it's cleaning the fuel that's sitting in the tank. And all you have to remember is when you want to start the engine, you'll simply turn the valve that's between here and the primary filter, you will turn it into the on position, which then turns this pipe that's going back to the tank from here off. So the fuel can now flow to the engine through this primary and the main filter. It will burn what it needs and it will then send back to the tank through the return hose any surplus fuel. So even though it's not going to be a massive amount of fuel that's being returned, it will have been polished because it will have gone through this, it will have gone through the two filters and it'll go back to the tank. It'll always go back to the tank cleaner than it left it. So even if you never had the pump and valve system added, just having this on, in its, on its own will do a heck of a good job. So as I say, this is going to be professionally fitted. Um, not majorly expensive item. I'm, I'm going to give you the price after it's been fitted because at the moment I've paid for this, but I haven't been given a price of fitting, although the manufacturers do say that it's not a mammoth task. Um, and the guy who's going to fit this is actually fitting one on his own boat first and uh, then he's going to do mine. So I just thought I'd show it's a nice sexy looking piece of kit, nice and shiny, plenty of um, bits and pieces. As I say, here's one of the, um, that's the T section that will go between that hose and that will then feed, this one will feed to my primary, this one here underneath will then feed back to the tank. So once we turn the valve in the line, the fuel will come into this T piece, it'll be stopped here because the valve will be this side and it'll automatically go down and back to the tank. So I hope that makes some kind of sense to you. And for me, it's just a, it's a it makes just makes sense. Why not have one of these? Again, why don't they fit these as standard? Because it's not majorly expensive and it's constantly, whatever you're running your engine, if you haven't got the pump system on there, it's keeping everything nice and clean. And if you have got the pump system, once a week, or whatever, um, you can flip this little pump on and leave it for a few hours, leave it for the day, doesn't really matter. And it will just simply circulate. It's a little bit like when you have a koi pond and you're pumping the water out the pond to the great big filter bed and then it filters it back into the pond. So it takes the dirty water out your pond, it takes it to all the different stages of the filter system and it pushes it back as clean, um, clean water with no sediment in it. Exactly the same principle, but we're going to do it with diesel. So uh, I know I've rabbited, um, but please, please, please do take a look at the fuel guard. I reckon this is going to be one of the better investments I've made on this boat. Check out the uh, the video on YouTube that the guy's done. Um, draw your own conclusions. But uh, as I say, hopefully it'll be fitted in the next couple of weeks and uh, I will show you that. So today's job for me is the easy one is fit the galvanic isolator. That's dead easy. And my other job today I'm going to go down the weed hatch. Now I've never took the lid off the weed hatch in all the time I've had the boat, simply because the boat's never been anywhere. But when I moved Freedom last week, I noticed when I put her into reverse, which again, if you're not boat orientated people, it pushes the water under your boat because the propeller's going the wrong way then. So it's instead of pushing the water from behind your boat, when you're going forward, when you go reverse, it's literally blowing the water under your boat and I did notice a bit of a metallic rattle. Um, not enough to make me think, oh my crikey, I've got something major wrong in the prop shaft system. Um, but I'm, th I'm toying with the thought that possibly the weed hatch cover and base plate have got some playing on and the rattling because it's only sealed in with a foam strip, apparently. So uh, 
I'm going to tidy all these away, ready for when the fitters come to do their bit. And uh, I'm going to have a quick cup of coffee. And then I'm going to get this uh, engine cover up and we'll have a look down the hatch. Come and join me. Oh. So now we're on the stern deck. As you can see the doors. This is my power in to the boat socket. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug the isolator in there and this cable here is going to be plugged into this here which is basically a mirror image of what the original socket on the boat is so it's more like an extension for want of a better word but obviously it's got this little box of um, tricks in between now I can if I wanted to I'll just take you and show you so if I'm moving a bit quick don't want to drop my phone in the water, that's one thing for sure. I could, if I wanted to. This is my electrical supply. And I'm number two. I could unplug here and put the isolator in that section there. The reason I'm choosing not to is because I'm not saying somebody would do it on the marina but it leaves it out in the open where if some unscrupulous person wanted to they could actually unplug it and steal it so I'm now just going to nip out to that uh, electrical supply disconnect the, uh, light, uh, the power connect this uh, into the socket here and I'm just going to turn the power back on and that's how easy it is. Simple. So nice and easy. Just ease that plug out. This one can only go in. Pardon my head being in the way. It can only go in one way because it's got a let's see if you can see that it's got a little lug on there. So that goes in. Nice and tight with the clip holding in place. And again, the feed in has got a lug. Nice and tight. Now what I will do, I'm gonna tidy this up. Because at the moment I've got my logs here. So I'm gonna move them. And this cable originally comes round from the very back of the boat underneath this matting. I'm just gonna pull the excess cable down behind the storage tub so it's not a trip hazard and uh, I'm now going to go and plug the mains back in and that's it as simple as that easy for and there it is neat and tidy out of the way it won't be a trip hazard I am going to get some little adhesive cable holders to put on the cable either side of the black tube just to hold it tight onto that metal um, bar that it's, that it's resting against and uh, that's my power in, so obviously, you know, I've, I've just got to leave it there. There's nowhere else I can mount that. And the rest of the cable runs under the step below that black mat, so again, it's not a trip hazard. And uh, everything's plugged in, and it's now doing exactly what it's designed to do protect this hull. Oh. Now that we're getting like into that. the uh, the wintry back end of the year, it's time to stock up with wood. For my fire, I buy this from a, um, a farm in Newton. It's just clean white wood. It's um, been dried, so it's very low moisture content. Uh, it's got no additive, uh, no additive, no preservatives of any kind on it, no wood stain or dyes. So it's ideal for popping on the fire at night. And I have these size I buy and also I get these bags of what they call off cuts and it really is just that it's all sorts of bits and pieces and I just use them in the morning when the fire's not gone out but it's gone low I give it a good riddle and then I chuck a handful of these small pieces on and about 20 pieces of um, XL uh, fuel and that takes me through uh, 12 hours so very very cost effective so 
my bio, uh, sorry, my stern here is a little bit cluttered with the bags, but I'm not bothered because that's to be expected during the winter and I don't sit out here too much in the winter months. I normally want to keep about half a dozen bags on the back of the boat and then I put the coal into the bow area. So, next task is I'm going to just take this table and chairs down and lift that grey mat there because there's a hatch cover that gets me down to the weed hatch. So I'm just going to move all this lot and then I'll set you up and you can see what we're up against when it comes to sorting um, the weed hatch. The black mat went all the way to the back. So we'll just peel that back. And uh, we'll be able to remove the cover. Just have to take you back a little bit. Sorry for having to disturb you. So my engine bay covers are split into the two. Obviously, this area here is the main cover for the engine. And this small one is the cover for the weed hatch, which we can lift out of the way quite easily. So, let me just move you a bit closer, and hopefully, right for those. Okay, so I hope you can see this all right. And uh, this is my weed hatch. Now this consists basically of a box that's welded into the floor of the, the boat and under this hatch there's an opening straight down to your propeller shaft and propeller. Now when you first look at a boat it's quite easy to think that when you take this lid off you're going to flood. Well that's not the case because it's held down with a clamp bar and the height of this box is much higher than the height of the water outside. So it gives you access to clear any debris, polythene bags, lumps of rope, or anything that gets stuck around your propeller. I'm just gonna rest on there a second, and I'll take you off the stand and I'll show you. I've got an old towel here just to stand this on a minute. Now the reason I'm having a look at this it's because I picked up a bit of, well I think it was metallic vibration off of it. Although the foam doesn't look that bad, to be fair, but it's hard to tell just by looking at it. So let me just take you off here. Straight down the hatch. And if you can see to the right of the um, water, you can just see the tips of the propeller. So you're able to get your arm down and round that propeller to unhook anything that's maybe obstructing. Um, not 100% sure if the um, the foam, which is this bit here on this lid, has gone weak. It's hard to tell. Um, but my friend Callum says he has got some of this, and uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to just replace it for the hell of it. The um, that is the underside, uh, which obviously again it just restricts water blasting up out of the into the um, weed hatch. Got a few fresh water mussels on it. That's tea sorted. <laughs> There's no, I can't see any signs of it where it's been rubbing on the metal. Um, and it may just be, it may just be the vibration of the water under the boat when it's in reverse, as I was hearing. Um, that is the, um, as you can just see down there, that is the coupling between the engine, gearbox, and the prop shaft. And as she's not done any mileage, I'm doubting very, very much if there's anything there untoward. But when I've um, when I've refitted this, I'm going to put it back loosely now because I'm not too worried about it. And because we're not running the propeller, I'm not going to put the clamp on. There's no need. One of the things I just want to pick up on. Now I did watch last year before I even bought a boat I watched a narrowboat youtuber and his wife um, sorting out a lot of garbage that got wrapped around their propeller and the thing that concerned me most was that as you can see there's my control panel and as you'll see it's padlocked 
Now, while this guy was clearing the debris from down there where the propeller is, his tower like that was open and the key was in the ignition. So this is a really, really important thing. Uh, and I'm not trying to teach all the traditional boaters how to suck eggs, but I'm one of these avoid accidents at all risks, at all costs, because it's just not worth taking a gamble. When I'm out on freedom, I'm going to be on my own. So all I've got to do is either check my weed hatch in the morning while this is still padlocked, or if it's a problem during the day when I'm out cruising, I'll moor up, I will take the key out, and I will close that lid. If you leave a key in, especially if there's two of you on the boat, or your family's on the boat with kids, and you've got your arm down that weed hatch where that propeller is, it's very, very easy for a child or somebody inadvertently to turn that key. So top tip, if you're gonna take the hatch cover off, close the cover on your ignition system. That way then, there's no way anybody, if it's got no key in it and that lid's down, is gonna be tempted or even try to start your engine. It's just not worth the risk of leaving it open while your arm is down there. Well, you can see fish look. <laughs> I'm gonna get me rod. So, yeah, I'm gonna put the cover back on there for now. I'll take a picture of this phone and send it to Callum and I might pop over tonight and pick some up and it work tomorrow then Wednesday I'll replace it so uh, I'll let you see what I end up doing once I've got the phone Good morning and welcome to Wednesday, the 6th of um, October. Not be long before it's uh, Halloween. Um, I've just had my breakfast, I've had Misty out for a walk and I've set myself a couple of tasks because it's a nice day. I'm going back down the weed hatch today um, and I'm going to remove all the original foam uh, edging. And my good friend Callum has dropped off more than I'm going to need, so I'll have some spare, which is slightly thicker, which is good because when I clamp the lid down, it'll create even a better seal. So I'm going to put this or some of this in its uh, in place of the original. And uh, when he visited, he asked me, could I find a use for this old boat hook? And uh, he'd been out this year with Louise and uh, at some point he lost the, the end and it looks like he's carved with a kitchen knife and just managed to screw this on just to get him back to the marina. He's now been out and bought one of these lightweight telescopic. Now again, I like something that's got a bit of solidness about it. So my intention today is to, once I've done the weed hatch, I'm going to wire brush the, um, the hook head, then I'm going to remove it. I'm going to cut the pole off I'm going to measure the distance on the hook insert, mark the pole and then I'm going to plane a nice symmetrical shaft to fit inside of here uh, and re-screw it and then I'm going to use my wire brush on my drill to remove all the old paint before I sand it by hand and I'm going to stain it and if I've got enough gun oil left I'm going to just give it a quick treatment of uh, the gun oil just so it matches my poles as you can see it's got old paint on it it needs a good old uh, restoration and uh, that's my uh, 
that's right I'm, I'm, I'm getting good at this you know <laughs> turning everybody else's junk into something that looks nice on freedom if I stay on this marina long enough I could build another boat if people just keep bringing me bits and saying do you want this so uh, I'm going to tidy all the area out make some space get down in that um, engine bay area get the weed hatch cover off and then we'll take it from there so join me in a bit It's a bit windy and it's a bit cold, but I've brought the uh, the boat hook out and with my trusty old DeWalt with a wire brush on the end, I've now wire brushed, run the brush over the end, the tip, and uh, now these marks here, where I've used the wire brush to get the paint off, a bit more down here, you'll just see it's a little bit coarse. This I'm not worried about because I'm now going to hand sand it and uh, get this nice and smooth and then I'll make a decision whether I'm, I'm going to stain it or whether I'm going to paint it. But uh, yes, I could go out and just buy a brand new pole, but the way I look at it is this has most likely been around for quite a few years and by the time I finish with it, it's going to have a lot more life left in it and it's a good heavy hook. You know, it's something if you have to push away from a bank, it's not going to bow. If you have to break some ice, if you're out on the canal and it's frozen, you can break the ice with a tip and uh, put it back to good use. So uh, let me get it to a cup of coffee because I'm only in a t-shirt, it's flipping cold. And then I'm going to uh, get this sanded. managed to find just a bit of the gun stock oil that I had left in the bottom of the tin and I've given this a coating now so it's been stained and it's had about three coats of gun stock oil on it so I've just left it here on the finger jetty to dry and once it's dry I'm going to fit the, um, the actual metal hook back on the end. I've chamfered this a little bit neater than it was and sanded it so it will fit better inside the actual hook uh, because before there was a gap where Callum had made a temporary repair he'd literally sliced it back with a knife and water could get down behind well hopefully I'll show you this will now fit it's about there and the hole there will fit snug around the actual shaft um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it outside now for the rest of the afternoon until it's hard enough and then uh, we'll get that to screwed up. Right, just before I put this back on the roof, just let sort of show you. I've, um, all I've done, I've sanded it by hand. I've given it a couple of coats of stain 
and then I found a little drop of the gun stock oil left in my bottle and uh, I've just put it on by hand, rubbed it into the shaft. Now, what I haven't done, and I've deliberately not done, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, is all these little indentations. I could have sanded them out, but I've left them because to me it gives it a bit of character. It's an old hole that's had a, a bit of a life. Um, and it just adds to its uh, its appeal to me, you know. If I'd wanted a brand new shaft, I'd just gone out and bought one. The um, hook now sits lovely around the shaft. I've hand sanded that to fit. Just giving that a bit of a wire brush off. And uh, I think that shaft's now gonna have a lot more years life left in it. Little chances are outlive my need on freedom. So I'm gonna go and put it on the roof get myself a cup of tea and start the rest of today's task and I think that's a yeah, good job done. What do you think? Right, I've worked actually the wrong way around. I was going to do the weed act first uh, but I got started on the pole on the boat, uh, hook, boat hook and uh, I got a bit carried away. But I've still got time today to get this sorted. I just put this locking bar in loose last night so that will take much shifting okay get that out onto a towel I'm sure if you can see okay I think you can let me just get me uh, my new phone and we'll just see if there's a bit of a difference in it I think there is Now yeah, this foam is twice the thickness of that, so I'm imagining it, although it's not as broad it doesn't matter because it only seals basically on that bit there on this ledge, so uh, I imagine that this will, if there was any rattles in there, because this is weak it will uh, solve that problem, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get you a little bit closer without dropping you down the hole and uh, whilst I'm in here I'm just going to have a feel around the actual prop shaft what should I say the propeller itself just to see if there's anything on towards passing around it now my control you see me <laughs> my control panel is bolted everything is turned off so there's no risk of anybody starting the engine and that's something you must always, always be sure of before you start sticking your hand down. And now this is clear, there's no issue with Cool, you don't realise how big your propeller is until you get your hand on it. Yeah, that's perfect, there's no issues with that. And there's no definitely no play in the propeller so I'm just wondering if either the water going under the boat when you're in reverse has caused something in, in here you know that rattle because there's a few bits of spare wood and metal and uh, I'm just thinking it was something more serious but the thing is it's not a bad uh, thing to do. You'll do it on a regular basis, obviously if you're out on the water you will be checking on a daily basis I imagine to make sure there's nothing wrapped around your propeller before you start your day and uh, if ever you get any issues then obviously like we said earlier switch everything off, once you've moored up close or at least yeah lock or close your control panel so nobody can accidentally turn the engine and you can get your hand in there. You can buy these um, elbow length rubber gloves because that's all you would need to get down there. But it's just nice to get to understand how everything works. So that when you do go out, like me, I'm a novice, 
So when I do go out, it won't come as such a shock when you've got to start trying to solve issues. One of the one of the other things I'm going to do, not today, I don't know if I can get you moved across so you can see it. Talk about bad, bad design. Can you see my hand? No. Put the camera to. That's it, now you're about to see. That is a drain. So any water that comes inside the boat with it blows under the covers, hits this drainage gutter, goes into this hole, and there's a pipe that takes it out to the boat. I am going to get a Dremel with a little grinding stone on because the boat builder, in his wisdom, has welded a line across there. And as you can see, see that. It's like a dam. What is the point? I sometimes wonder when people design things if they actually had been on a boat because it's just stupidity to have that hard weld raised up there. So I'm going to make that another little job on my list of little jobs that need sorting. Right, I'm going to get the foam off of this uh, cover and uh, get it ready for the new foam. Right, it's a bit manky, as you'd expect, I suppose. So, let's get this pulled off, and then we'll have something to, to measure to get the new bits fitted. It's only a sticky back bow, so it's nothing too difficult to sort. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my wire brush on the drill, take this outside on the pontoon and uh, get all this off as I can. I think with the um, Definitely getting it off. It's a nice clean base for the new foam. It's like with all jobs, preparation is the most important bit. Hot tip. If you're going to move on to a boat, invest in a decent rechargeable um, drill electric screwdriver. Um, you can get the ones that's got multiple attachments, they all take the same batteries. Get two batteries. These are 14.4, they last a, a fairish amount of time, plenty long enough for the jobs I want to do and uh, get them stacked away somewhere safe because you'll always find a use for them and it'll save a lot of uh, man hours when you can get a drill to do a job that you would normally do you know, living by hand. Right, get it back inside and get the foam on. So all we need to do now measure off the lengths that we need peel off the back This isn't from the chamber, it is by a friend of mine, and it's industrial um, foam tape, which I've been assured not only is it thicker, which it is, it's a lot more robust, if that's the right word. So we'll spin it round and get the other long side done, and then we'll just got to get the bits inside. You can see I'm pulling the paper off as I go, just so I can avoid touching the, the sticky bits on the fingers. So it gives it a chance to adhere, if that's the right word, adhere, stick. 
nice to the so when I've wire brush as I say it's got off all the residue but it also heats up the area and dries any moisture just by the friction of the Latin wire brush so it's uh, it's gonna make sure it sticks well the right length as I say I've got more of this film than I'll ever need but uh, maybe in another 10 years time it'll be time to change it again I don't know it'll be safe in my uh, in my engine room out of the way I'm not going to take up much space that's for sure Ooh, looks like he's been cut by somebody who knows what he's doing it's quite scary as I said before in the beginning when you first look at a boat and you see the weed hatch you can't help but think where the heck does the water not come into your boat? But it's a clever design. It gives you access to your propeller. Any rubbish that's around it. And the nice thing is, if you if you do your inspection when you're moored up, you've got your pram cover up. You can do it even if it's raining, and the weather's not going to you know cause you to have to rush and miss anything. Um, I do think something we'll all learn to do is keep that prop checked because people dump all sorts of things I've watched some other the vlog, other vlogs and they pulled out complete suits you know gentleman's suit three-piece suit luckily there's no man inside it <laughs> but um, duvets tires it's amazing what people just dump in the canals um, and I'm guessing, although I'm going to be doing more rivers than the canals, I'm guessing that's not going to be much different. Because people think once it's thrown in, nobody will ever notice it. There. Yeah. Right, I'm not going to video myself putting it back. But uh, that's going to be sorted for the next 10 years. Time to tidy up. Tide of the week. Oh. Hi and welcome to this week's Tide of the Week. And um, before we kick it off, let me first of all apologise on several counts. One, I haven't even bothered to have a shave. Two, if I look hot and sweaty, it's because I've just been moving the equivalent of a half ton of coal which if I've got my technical head on, you'll be able to see that now. It's getting that time of year now when uh, I turn freedom around a little bit. I've started to store my logs on the uh, stern and I'm bringing the winter coal in onto the bow. And you'll just see some through the door glass there. I always put, uh, it takes about a half a bag in that plastic tub and the reason I do that is when it's in the bags, by nature it sweats and it's wet. And uh, just by tipping half a bag at a time into that plastic tub, and then I take my coal bucket to that, I'm actually filling the coal bucket with dry coal. So today I've just shifted, um, well the equivalent of shifting a half a tonne, I've moved a quarter of a tonne of coal. And on Sunday I've got the other half of that order, which is... I've ordered half a ton in total, so another quarter of a ton to shift. Um, and that shall take me through to about January. So uh, hopefully, if the snow comes, it won't be an issue. I don't have to get out to get my fuel. Whew. Dumping coal. Do you know, I know it's a task, but in a weird kind of way, I actually enjoy doing it because I know I'm now getting stocked up for the winter. And I'm looking forward to a lot of cosy nights on board Freedom. And... The other apology is, I'm actually, not only am I doing it in my scruffs without even bothering to have a shave, I'm actually doing side of the week and it's not even dinner time. Um, but I'm absolutely connect from shifting the coal, so I thought I'll do it now. And last but not least, 
before we kick into this week's, I'd just like to say a big thank you to a lady by the name of Pam Harris, who lives in a lovely place apparently called Vermont in the USA. And can I hear? Uh, last week, if you watched the vlog, I was referring to the cider being called hard cider, and I couldn't understand why. Well, it's a USA product that I was um, reviewing, and Pam messaged me to say that in the States, if um, cider contains alcohol, it has to be labelled hard cider. So that sorted that out. It's not, um, it's not a gangster cider, it just means it's got alcohol in it. So that brings us to this week's cider. So thank you, uh, Pam. And keeping with the theme of ciders that aren't from the UK, and I'm a, bit, I'm a little bit um, uh, wary of this one. This one's called Savannah Premium Cider. Now the reason I say I'm wary of it, and I've never had this before, is because of that word there, dry. It's like dry wine. <laughs> uh, and champagnes are dry. Um, I, you know, I like sweet sizes <laughs> and bubbly sizes and I, d I don't know what this is going to taste like. Now this is a product it says from South Africans premium cider from the company called savannah.co.za It's a 330ml bottle, it's 5% so packs a little bit of a punch um, and it was a princely sum of 85p and this is from um, b and Bargains in Sutton Ashfield. They always seem to have a heck of a range of ciders in there. So I was at work, <coughs> forgive me, the other day, and I thought I'll just pop in and see if there's any that I haven't tried. And there's still about six on the shelf that we haven't yet tried. And uh, I've seen this before and I keep walking past it thinking, yeah, I'm not gonna try that. But we've come to that point where I've got very little choice. So like I say every week, we're going to crack it open and we're going to see what it tastes like. I can't believe I'm having this before dinner time. I normally do Sarge of the Week last thing at night before I do my vlog. But as soon as I've done this, I've got my vlog to edit because it's uh, Thursday the 7th and uh, it's got to be uploaded onto uh, my channel tonight, uh, tomorrow. And my daughter's got to do all her little bits. She does all the thumbnail pictures and wording and everything. Uh, and then it's going to go live on um, midnight tomorrow. So, it smells like cider. I don't think I'm gonna pour a lot in there because knowing me, I'm not gonna like this. I shouldn't really prejudge it, but. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> Well, to be fair, to be fair, I could actually drink this. But I am going to drink it. Maybe that's because I've just been shifting half a ton of coal, I don't know. Oh, do you know, after the first couple of mouthfuls that make you shudder, if you like dry drinks, it sounds a bit daft, doesn't it, a dry drink? But if you like a dry um, cider, you'll like this, I think. Yeah, it grows on you, very happily. Um, no other underlying flavour in there. There's nothing that sort of like hits you after you've drunk it. It's just very happily, as you'd expect from a cider. Relatively light taste, it's not heavy. Um, and it, it's quite a refreshing cider. I'd imagine, again, this would be absolutely fantastic with a meal. I know I always refer to which is good with meals and which isn't. Um, you, know, you, you could have it as a sociable cider. You know, I mean, if you're a dry cider drinker, you would have it as a sociable cider. If you're like me, you like your sweet ciders and your fruit ciders, um, I would, I think I would have some of this in my fridge. I wouldn't buy a load. I might buy a couple of bottles and keep it in the fridge for when I treat myself to a steak cooked in Coca-Cola. And if you haven't seen that, go back into my vlogs and have a look at that because it's a beautiful steak if you do it proper. And uh, I think I would enjoy that 
and luckily it's only in a small bottle I don't think I want more than one at a time you know what I'm saying it's uh, it's not that nice for me but it's quite refreshing and I think you know with a steak or a roast beef or a roast pork kind of dinner it would be lovely it really would yes I can actually drink this now without sugaring so it just goes to show that for weeks and weeks and weeks I've walked past this bottle of Savannah Dry and assumed I wouldn't like it. I think if I drank the whole bottle in one hit, because I'm not much of a drinker, even though you think I do drink a lot of cider, I think I'd have a headache. Uh, <laughs> but it is nice, it is nice. Um, not expensive, carries 5% so give you a bit of a, put, uh, a kick and uh, one worth trying to do go out and get a bottle see what you think and do put in the comments i'd love to see some of your feedback on some of these ciders that i'm working my way through because eventually i'm going to have to join the aa because i've drunk so many different ciders and become hooked so that's it for this week um again i've re resurrected a a piece of boating equipment that was going to be scrapped uh in my new boat hook and I love it because it's got some weight in it. Uh, I know you can buy the plastic um, telescopic ones, but it has got weight in it and I like that. And it looks nice and it's had a life and it's got another life ahead of it. My weed act cover has been sorted. I don't even know if that was the problem, but uh, for what bit of effort it took to remove the old foam and put some nice thick, uh, much thicker, um, what I call commercial stamp, uh, standard uh, foam in there, courtesy of Callum thank you very much it will eliminate that as being one of the reasons why I could hear this what I thought was a metallic rattle it's definitely not in the prop system uh, I doubt it's in the gearbox because the oil levels good it's clean it's not done any it's only done 20 hours so it's not exactly worked hard um, and I've no idea what next week holds I really haven't got a clue um, but like every week, I'm sure I'll find something that uh, some of you, maybe not all of you, but some of you will find interesting. Please, if you haven't subscribed, if you just happen to fall across this channel, please do subscribe. It, I've never set this up to be um, all singing, all dancing, whistles and bells. It's just real life as I live it, week in, week out, on a boat, in a marina. Good, bad and indifferent. Now, it won't be that long before... I take the ropes off and I hopefully do my maiden voyage and that is going to be hopefully to Liverpool and back. Um, I've got a little plan in my head that involves um, another YouTube vlogger. He knows who he is because he watches this channel and uh, we might I might see if we can put our heads together. It all depends how uh, accepting he is anyway he knows who he is and i'm just laying down a bit of a hint so until next week remember give me a thumbs up if you liked it please don't give me a thumbs down because it's very depressing to see and uh, do subscribe tell your friends share it on your facebook pages let people know we exist and from misty and me till next week cheers <laughs>